This marks the first time that an autonomous robot has achieved world champion level performance in a real world competitive sport. Two days ago, a neural network beat the world champion at drone racing and achieved a record time while doing so. A neural network is a machine learning model that processes data in a way that is similar to the human brain. This race course was not predetermined. The robot simply showed up, looked at the hoops using its cameras and its vision, and simply flew through them. This was just AI beating humans at their own game. Dr. Jim Fan, Stanford PhD and senior AI scientist at NVIDIA, reflects that this robot, trained in large-scale simulation and fine-tuned in the real world, believes this is the paradigm that will get us to generalist robots someday. In the article that covers this accomplishment in detail, there was one paragraph that will help us understand Dr. Fan's claim. It reads, Optimizing a policy purely in simulation, this means simply synthetic data, data generated by simulation, yields poor performance on physical hardware. This is talking about the robot itself. So data gathered by a simulation yields poor performance on physical hardware if the discrepancies between simulation and reality are not mitigated. So they mitigate these discrepancies by collecting a small amount of data in the real world and using this data to increase the realism of the simulator. So the more real world data you get, the more realistic your simulator becomes and the performance in your hardware gets better and better. But did you know that the reason companies use simulations is because they can't get a lot of data in the real world? But there is one company who can and that is Tesla. Tesla is currently training robots using real-world data to maneuver the real world. They are training their neural nets using video data acquired by existing Tesla cars. I'm sure you've seen the news lately that autonomous cars like Cruise and Waymo got approved to drive across all of San Francisco completely autonomous. And I'm sure you've also seen that they're getting stuck left and right creating huge traffic jams. Well. This biased article from 2022 suggests that Cruz and Waymo rely on synthetic data because it gives them speed and a level of control that's impossible with data collected from the real world. Well, as we've just learned from this new research, training your models purely on simulation yields poor performance on physical hardware. It's no wonder that San Francisco is getting turned into a big clog. Cruz and Waymo use no real world data at all because what the companies have done is completely rendered San Francisco in HD, so the cars still think they're in a simulation as they drive through it. So it turns out, the best data for robots to navigate the real world is data from the real world. And funny enough, here's a list of all the companies currently relying on synthetic data to train their models. All of these companies use a piece of hardware called LiDAR that is supposed to help transition the simulation data into being effective in the real world. Here's Elon Musk's thoughts on that hardware. LiDAR is, is a fool's errand, and, any, and anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well, now we're going to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. You can tell Elon is a little heated there because he's been given a hard time on this subject for years, and he is more informed on this subject than anybody. I mean, he owns SpaceX, and SpaceX put LiDAR in SpaceX Dragon to help it dock at the International Space Station, and they didn't just buy a LiDAR, they developed their own, and Elon spearheaded that project personally. I will post a link if you want to see him talking about that. Elon thinks LiDAR is stupid in a car because there is two inputs, and sometimes they contradict each other. The LiDAR will be telling you one thing, but then the cameras in the car are seeing another thing, and this increases complexity drastically. So Tesla's solution for autonomous driving is to rely simply on the eight cameras installed in the car. But with the Model 3 refresh yesterday, there are now nine cameras as they added one to the front bumper. For neural net training, Tesla relies entirely on their 400,000 FSD beta testers who are currently acquiring video data in the real world. If you didn't catch that, I will say it again. Tesla already has 400,000 people using their autonomous vehicle software in the United States. Now, if you think I'm talking about autopilot, I am not. I am talking about FSD beta. It currently costs $200 a month and it takes complete control of your car. It even does unprotected left turns. Tesla takes video data from these drivers, feeds it to the neural network, and the driving just continues to get better as a result. Just yesterday, Tesla dropped the buy it forever price from 15,000 to 12,000. And this is extremely bullish because it means Tesla wants more video data. By lowering the price, they're making it more accessible to more people and the number of FSD beta testers is going to rise. Tesla will get more video data and the FSD will get better. Not only that, but Tesla is going to make more money. 
let's assume 1,000 customers and the take rate is 10%. So they get 100 customers at 15K. That's 1.5 million in revenue for Tesla. But now they drop the price to 12K and the take rate rises to 15%. Now Tesla pulls 1.8 million in revenue. Another tout of confidence in FSD by Tesla is the fact that they've been cutting the prices of their models all year long. Model Y is down 20% and Model 3 is down 11%. Tesla had beautiful 30% gross margins before this, but it's a long-term strategy. They're trying to increase volume, attain market share, so that in the long term, there are more vehicles on the roads that they're pulling software-based income from. More vehicles means more cars are supercharging, more cars are using FSD, and Tesla makes more money in the long term. Reports from beta testers on Twitter show that after using FSD for a while, it feels weird when they have to actually drive the car manually. Investors expect take rates over the long term to rise from 10% now to 90%. This is for two reasons. Number one is that it's going to become safer than a human driver, so it'll save like 40,000 lives a year in America. You're going to be able to watch Netflix and play video games while your car drives you around. You could even post on Twitter. And the second reason is that it's going to turn Tesla cars into an asset. You will be able to lounge at home and send your car out in the night as a robo taxi to drive people around like an Uber. It's also nice for consumers because these won't be labor intensive rides because Tesla's not going to have to pay a driver so they can offer the consumer a cheaper price than Uber. Moreover, the consumer gets a private ride, the car to themselves privacy. On top of all of this, and what is the biggest tout of confidence we've talked about so far, is dedicated robo-taxis that Elon just mentioned on the Q2 earnings call. Yeah, in the long term, uh, autonomy we think is going to just drive volume through the ceiling next level. Um, and, uh, and our sort of future robo-taxi uh, products, um, the dedicated robo-taxi products, uh, we think have like quasi-infinite demand. Um, we're, we're, the way we're going to manufacture um, the robot taxi is, is also itself a revolution. So it's a revolutionary design made in a revolutionary way. It'll be by, by far the highest uh, units per hour of, of any vehicle production ever. Did you catch that? The way we're going to manufacture the robot taxi is also itself a revolution, Elon said. That means they've already put thought into how this thing is going to be manufactured. This is happening. It's not going to have a steering wheel, probably no mirrors because nobody will be driving. And you could probably fit like 10 seats in there because you don't need a driver's seat. The possibilities are endless and so will be the demand for this product. Tesla never has to worry about selling them either because they could just add it to their own fleet of robo taxis that are generating passive income. Oh, by the way, if you're not new to this whole Tesla narrative, Wall Street analysts are not pricing in this possibility to their valuation models. In other words, Tesla's stock price is almost entirely based on just the sale of vehicles. If you look at analyst projections, they forecast very little software-based earnings into their forecasts. To form valuations, analysts look at previous earnings combined with current growth rates. They're saying to themselves, oh, this AI software thing that uh, Elon Musk, the, the guy that smokes weed on podcasts is doing, and he's got the most talented team of engineers in the world, but but it's hardly making any money yet. And it's a huge liability. And because it's not done yet, it's probably speculative and, and it's not guaranteed. So they think like that. It's like, what numbers do you have? Okay, there's my valuation. And I got to give them credit. I mean, I, I can't blame them. They've got a lot of clients and they can't say to their clients, oh yeah, Elon Musk, that guy that makes fun of politicians on Twitter. Well, he, he says he's going to do this. So we're, 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 he, the Tesla's our number one position. I can't blame them. But they've also been taught that the auto market is ultra competitive and has extremely low margins. So that's another reason that they steer clear. For years, the narrative with analysts has been that the competition will catch up, that they will make compelling products. Well, where are they? I mean, did you see the Model 3 refresh? The gap is just getting wider and wider. And most of these companies have not figured out that LiDAR is not going to work. They're going to be caught with their pants down and they're going to be begging Tesla to allow them to license full self-driving. To put into perspective just how cheap Tesla's stock price is, in 2021, Tesla had an $800 billion valuation with a 1,000 PE ratio. Now, a PE ratio is the price divided by the earnings, the price of the stock, and then the amount of money Tesla earns divided. It was 1,000, which means if you put money into Tesla stock, technically, it would take you 1,000 years to get your money back based on Tesla's earnings. In 2023 today, Tesla still has an $800 billion valuation, but now their PE ratio 
is 74. So you can see that compression now, it would take you 74 years to get your money back. Based on that trajectory, two years from now, Tesla's PE ratio would be five, which means that it would take you five years to get your money back. Well, something's got to give because the average PE ratio of the S&P 500 right now is 25. So if you buy the whole S&P 500, it takes you 25 years to get your money back. And in two years, if things continue as and Tesla doesn't go up, well, then it'll only take you five years and everyone will buy it. So there's only one way to stop Tesla PE from getting to five, and that's for the stock to go up, not financial advice.